Please pray with me. Father, it is by your grace that we are here. It is by your grace that we are saved. And we are saved by the blood of Jesus. Jesus, thank you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. This is the time in our service that believers get to participate in the Lord's Supper. This is our opportunity to express our gratitude for his saving grace and to examine ourselves and to confess our sin. The passage that we're going to be looking at today is in Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. So if you don't have a Bible, there are some men up front who would be happy to provide one to you. If you don't own a Bible, you may take this one with you. It is a gift from Grace Bible Church. So let's read together Matthew 5, 1 through 3. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So in Matthew 5, verse 3, Jesus presents the true meaning of happiness. The Beatitudes are the first formal teaching by Jesus to his disciples. He is sitting on a mountainside, but has a much bigger audience than just his disciples. There is a reason why he starts with blessed are the poor in spirit. Being poor in spirit is, foundation, is foundational to understanding all of Jesus' teaching and is foundational to entering his kingdom. Jesus wants the people of his kingdom to know and enjoy true happiness. How do we know this? Because each of the Beatitudes begins with the word blessed, which in the Greek means happy, well-off, fortunate. God wants his children to be filled with the joy that does not come from emotions or relationships or external circumstances. God wants us to experience a deep inner happiness that is not subject to outside forces but produced by God in our hearts. True happiness only comes to us through the entrance into his kingdom. And the first step to entering the kingdom is being poor in spirit. It is realizing our spiritual poverty. What does it mean to enter his kingdom? It is acknowledging him as Lord of your life, coming under his rule, his authority, and his blessing. How does God describe the, uh, the blessing in his kingdom? Ephesians 1.3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And then in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7, it tells us that this blessing will go on forever because it says, in the ages to come, he will show the surprising riches of his grace in kindness toward us in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. His blessing to us started the day we became a new creature in Christ. So what does Jesus mean by being poor in spirit? Poor in this passage means to cower or cringe like a beggar. It is the shrinking away from someone. You might get the picture of someone begging out of shame. This is a person whose only skill is to beg and is ashamed to beg because there's no other choice. This is someone who does not raise his eyes to see who is speaking to him. He has no wealth, no respect, no honor, no position, only the filthy rags that he's wearing. One commentator says, it would be humility, it would be 
so humiliating for a man to be a beggar that he would crouch, cover his face with a garment, holding out his hand, ashamed to let the giver know his identity. That's the word Jesus used in making reference to poor in spirit. Do you want to be a part of God's kingdom? You start by recognizing that you can do nothing without Christ. You are completely dependent on the Lord to save you from your sin and from his wrath. You must see yourself as empty, poor, helpless, bankrupt, and knowing you can't contribute one single solitary thing to qualify you for any of his blessings. The Beatitudes are distinctively progressive, each leading to the next in logical succession. Poor in spirit is foundational because it demonstrates having a right attitude about ourselves and about God. A right attitude is one of humility, recognizing the truth of who we are. Humility in Isaiah 66, 2 is used to describe a believer, but to him, this one I will look, to him who is humble and contrite of spirit and who trembles at my word. This recognition comes only from God and leads to mourning and gentleness, hungering and thirsting for righteousness, showing mercy, purity of heart, and peacemaking. The poor in spirit are believers who acknowledge that prior to salvation, they were spiritually destitute and were totally unable to save themselves. They recognize their complete dependence on God. They knew their only hope of salvation was to repent and ask for forgiveness through leaning on the sovereign grace and mercy of God. And even that is a gift. The hardest thing for a hardened sinner to, sinner to do is admit his total depravity and unworthiness. But when a sinner has had his eyes opened to the amazing truth and admits his depravity, that's where salvation begins. And that is where blessing and happiness begin. The knowledge that we are nothing before God creates within us an absence of pride and self-confidence, of self-righteousness and self-reliance. True happiness that comes from salvation does not ignore or make light of sin. Instead, a sinner grieves and mourns over sin, turns from it, flees to God for genuine forgiveness, and in so doing, they find lasting joy. As believers, where are we today? One author puts it this way, we have kingdom grace, we have kingdom mercy, we have kingdom peace, we have kingdom joy, we have kingdom wisdom because we are subjects of the king. We have kingdom sovereignty. That is, the sovereign king takes care of his subjects. We have kingdom comf comfort for the times of sorrow. We have kingdom wisdom dispensed to us through the manual of the kingdom, which is the word of the living God. All spiritual blessings are ours. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So let's look at the word theirs for a second. Theirs in the Greek is the sense of theirs alone. Nobody else's. Barring all others who approach God except those with a beggar's heart, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Theirs is, not will be, theirs is. So whatever, whatever it is, it's present here and now. So if you're here today and admit that you are not a believer, we ask that you please humble yourself 
under the mighty hand of God. Ask him to forgive you and to grant you a new heart with new affections. We would love to have you join in communion today. But if you choose not to cry out to God, please allow the bread and the juice to pass you by. For those of you who do know Jesus, this is the time to remember what he has done for you and to celebrate your relationship with him. Men, please come in service.